Huitzilopochtli was known as the god of the sun and war. He was most frequently portrayed as an armed warrior, representing both the sun's ceaseless march across the sky and the Aztec's bellicose nature. The god was often portrayed with ornaments to symbolize the sun and war, such as a solar disk, a spear, and a shield ornamented with hummingbird feathers. He was also known for his bird colors, such as blue and green. Among some of the most famous myths surrounding Huitzilopochtli is that of his birth. He was conceived by Cuatlique, the goddess of the earth. When Cuatlique became miraculously pregnant, her other children, led by her daughter Coyoshoki, planned to kill her. And yet, Huitzilopochtli emerged fully formed and armed from Cuatlique's womb and stood up for his mother, defeating his brothers, something that epitomizes the victory of the sun over the night. As a sun god, Huitzilopochtli was tied to the sun's daily cycle and the idea that it battled against the night forces to be reborn each and every morning. As a war god, he served as the Aztec's warrior's patron and protector, and his cult was inherently tied to military expansion and battlefield success. One of the most well-known myths about this god reveals that the Aztecs were a nomadic and warlike people, and Huitzilopochtli, their patron and guiding god, advised them to leave the Atlan region and seek a new home. Huitzilopochtli promised the Aztecs that they would find their promised land, where they would set up a vast empire. And he gave them a specific sign to look for, an eagle resting on a nopal cactus, devouring a snake. This would be the heart of their new empire, and the place to build their great city. The Aztecs' migration was long and arduous, marred by several halts and conflicts along the way. Throughout their journey, Huitzilopochtli guided and protected his people, providing advice and instructions through priests and visions. Ultimately, following years of pilgrimage, the Aztecs reached the Valley of Mexico, a fertile valley with a great central lake. There, they saw the sign Huitzilopochtli had spoken of, the eagle on a cactus with a serpent in its claws. This was seen on an island in the middle of Lake Texcoco. The Aztecs understood this as divine guidance to establish their city, Tenochtitlan, which would become the Aztec Empire's capital and one of the largest cities in the pre-Columbian world. The image of the eagle, cactus, and serpent turned into a mighty symbol for the Aztecs, standing for their divine mission and destiny and is today the centerpiece of Mexico's coat of arms. The Aztecs believed that Huitzilopochtli needed human sacrifices to keep moving through the sky, maintaining the world in motion and driving away darkness. Many ceremonies and sacrifices were held in his honor, particularly during the winter solstice, his sacred month. Worship of Huitzilopochtli sat at the very heart of Aztec religion and identity. He was seen as the Aztec people's guide and protector, a central figure in their mythology and religious customs. His influence was felt both in day-to-day -day life and in the Aztec Empire's major political and military decisions. Templo Mayor, the great shrine in the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan, had one of its two altars entirely dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, showing his enormous significance for the Aztecs. The cult of Huitzilopochtli had a considerable role in expanding and maintaining the Aztec Empire, and his image is still a powerful symbol of Aztec culture and history. Quetzalcoatl is the famous feathered serpent of Aztec mythology. He is a powerful deity with the power to control the wind and a wealth of wisdom. He was considered a god of many things, knowledge, agriculture, arts, music, and poetry. His divine powers included the ability to create and destroy, to give life and to take it away. He was also a token of renewal and transformation, for serpents change their skin, symbolizing a new beginning. In Aztec mythology, Quetzalcoatl was one of the most important gods because he was a hybrid creature with a dual nature. He was considered a god of heaven and earth. Quetzalcoatl's feathered aspect represents his connection to heaven, and the fact that he is a serpent associates him with the earth. The cult of Quetzalcoatl was one of the most widespread and longest running in Mesoamerica. His image can be found on many artifacts and works of art from the region. There were temples dedicated to Quetzalcoatl in many Aztec cities, including the Templo Mayor in Mexico City. In Aztec culture, 
he was associated with the notion of an ideal and righteous ruler, capable of governing with wisdom and justice. Quetzalcoatl was known to be peaceful and benevolent. He was considered a symbol of civilization and culture. However, according to late legends, he was eventually driven out of the Aztec Empire by his enemies and promised to return one day to regain his throne. This promise was seen by some as a prophecy by the Spanish conquistadors, who were initially mistaken for Quetzalcoatl and his followers. His image and symbolism remain important to many Mesoamerican peoples to this day. His influence can be seen in many cultural traditions and practices in the region. Mictlantecuhtli is one of Aztec mythology's darkest and most powerful creatures, Lord of Mictlan, the realm of the dead. His name literally means Lord of Mictlan in Nahuatl, the Aztec tongue, and is known as the God of Death and the Underworld, a high-ranking member of the Aztec pantheon. The god governed the Underworld, the final destination of souls upon death, according to Aztec cosmology. The Mictlan was said to be a final resting place, nestled at the deepest level of the underworld, and all souls, despite their status or behavior in life, eventually descended into the Mictlan after death, except those who died in particularly honorable ways. Mictlan de Kutli appears usually as a skeleton or as a human being with bare skin, decked out with underworld jewelry and decorations. He is often pictured with a crown, claws, and exposed bones, symbolizing his connection with death and decay. He has a female counterpart and wife, Mixteca Kiwatl, referred to as the Lady of Mictlan. They preside over the world of the dead together and are in charge of looking after the souls that arrive there. Mictlan de Kutli holds a leading role over the creation myth of the Aztec's world, known as the Fifth Sun. When Quetzalcoatl heads down to Mictlan to reclaim the bones of ancient human beings to form the new humanity, Miklan de Kutli initially gives him permission to do so, but then tries to prevent him from escaping, illustrating the God of Death's erratic and volatile nature. As the God of Death, Miklan de Kutli was both feared and revered as a vital figure to the universe's order. The Aztecs did not see death as an end, but as a transitional phase in the eternal life circle. So, Miklan de Kutli was a key figure in the Aztec understanding of the afterlife and the cycle of existence. The god represents the unavoidable demise of all living things and the certainty of death. Notwithstanding his association with dark themes, he is an essential part of the cosmic balance and plays a crucial role in Aztec mythology and religion. Xochiquetzal is the goddess of beauty, love, fertility, flowers, and vegetation in Aztec mythology. Her name means precious feather flower. She was often depicted as a beautiful young goddess, festooned with flowers, feathers, and precious jewels. As the goddess of love and sexuality, Xochi Quetzal stands for the life's joyful and creative aspects, fostering passion and desire. She is also the protector of young women and pregnancy, granting fertility, and helping with childbirth. Xochi Quetzal was greatly worshipped, with many rituals and ceremonies being dedicated to her, particularly those involving love and marriage. Flowers were often used in celebrations and rituals in her honor, representing the ephemeral nature of beauty and the growth and renewal potential. The goddess not only ruled over love and beauty, but also the arts, including weaving, important activities in the Aztecs' daily lives, she promoted artistic creation and was seen as a patron saint of craftswomen and artists. Xochiquetzal was also named in legends involving her marriages to several gods, reflecting her role as goddess of fertility and procreation. She first married the god of the rising sun, Quetzalcoatl, but then split up and married the god of rain, Tlaloc. Some myths claim that the goddess was in need of more sexual satisfaction than her husband could provide, so the god of the night sky, Tezcatlipoca became her lover. Other myths, however, state that Tezcatlipoca kidnapped her. The myths around Xochi Quetzal have significant cultural ramifications, since she is seen as the protector of women, particularly those who are pregnant or in labor. Her story also echoes the Aztec belief that beauty and sexuality are powerful, divine forces that should be represented and honored. 
Shoji Quetzal is a goddess who celebrated life in the most joyful and creative forms. She epitomizes the ability to love, create, and appreciate beauty in all its forms. Known as the Lord of the Smoking Mirror, Tezcatlipoca, the Aztec god of the night sky, the moon and the stars. He was the lord of fire and death, the god of fate, war and sorcery, often portrayed as a ferocious and unpredictable deity who could bring good fortune and calamity to his followers. The god had a deep connection with the jaguar, his sacred animal. The jaguar is a nocturnal and vicious animal, known for its strength, hunting dexterity, and its ability to move silently in the dark. These features run in tandem with many of Tezcatlipoca's traits as a god of the night, mystery, magic, and war. He was the patron of rulers and warriors, benefiting those who displayed bravery and honor in battle. The cult of Tezcatlipoca featured elaborate ceremonies and sacrifices. He was honored with festivals and rituals involving human sacrifices deemed necessary to placate his thirst for war and conflict. Rituals and ceremonies devoted to Tezcatlipoca often surrounded the jaguar symbolism, including the donning of jaguar skins by priests and warriors during festivals and sacrifices. Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl were often portrayed as opponents, symbolizing conflicting and complementary forces within the universe. Tezcatlipoca is associated with darkness, night, and the material, while Quetzalcoatl is associated with light, day, and the spiritual. This is similar to the concepts such as yin and yang in Chinese philosophy, or yin and yang, where two competing forces are mutually dependent and necessary for the universe's harmony. Both are seen as the world's creators and destroyers. They actively take part in the creation and destruction cycles in Aztec cosmology. They work together to bring about the world and humanity in multiple myths, and they can be found in collision, resulting in the cosmos's destruction and cyclical renewal. Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl were a pair of opposing and essential forces in the Aztec world and society. They stood for the tension required to achieve progress and continuity in life and the cosmos. Zalot stands as a fascinating creature in Aztec mythology. He is most commonly associated with fire and lightning, and known as the god of transformation, twins, and illnesses, particularly malformations. Zalot is a crucial creature in Aztec mythology, being the twin brother of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god. Among his most important duties is to guide the sun across the underworld every night. This is regarded as a journey through darkness and danger before rising again each morning. This connects him with renewal and transformation. He is most often depicted as a creature with a dog's head, echoing his ties to death and the underworld. This shape also binds him to Zolitzquintli, a Mexican dog breed. After death, the Aztecs believed that the souls would embark on a challenging and complex journey to reach the underworld known as Mictlan. This was filled with perils and challenges, and the souls had no effortless way of completing it without help. Zolot, frequently depicted with dog-like feathers, was regarded as the soul's guide on this journey. The connection between Zolot and dogs is no accident. The native Zolitzquitli race enjoyed a strong spiritual connection with the realm of the dead and could guide souls through the underworld. This belief is mirrored in the relationship between Zolot and the dogs, found in some religious and artistic expressions. Zalot guided the souls, helping them to cross the Mictlan's numerous obstacles and dangers. Zalot's presence and help were essential to make sure that the souls arrived at their final destination in the world of the dead. The Aztec myth of humanity's creation said that, after the fourth sun's destruction and the beginning of the fifth sun, the gods acknowledged the need to create human beings to inhabit the earth. Nevertheless, at that point, all previous humans had been turned into fish following the catastrophe that ended the previous era. Quetzalcoatl and Zolot undertook a journey to Mictlan, the Aztec underworld, to collect the bones of ancient human beings to repopulate the earth. These were used to build the new human race. Mictlan's lord, Mictlan Tecutli, at first agreed to hand over the bones, but then tried to trick Quetzalcoatl and Zolot by obstructing their way back. When the bones were recovered and brought to the service, they still had to be brought back to life. 
Zalat helped Quetzalcoatl to carry out the ritual, which involved blood sacrifice. The gods shed their own blood to revive the new beings, who emerged as a result of the god's sacred blood sacrifice. Zalat is therefore not only associated with transformation and the underworld, but also plays a crucial role in creating and renewing humanity in Aztec mythology. The god was also present at the hatching of the fifth son, which in Aztec beliefs would start a new era. For this, Zalat aided two gods in sacrificing themselves to give birth to the sun and the moon. After both gods gave birth to the new stars, they noticed that Zalat also needed to sacrifice himself to make the sun move. Fearing the sacrifice, he ran away. He changed into different forms to escape the sacrifice, first into a corn plant, then into a magwe plant, and finally into an axolotl, a type of salamander. He was discovered despite all his cover-ups and was finally captured and sacrificed. His sacrifice gave rise to the sun's motion and the continuity of life. This myth implies that, regardless of his attempts to escape, Zalat could not evade his role in the universe. His capture and ensuing sacrifice are seen as essential for the cosmos to function and for the order and balance of the world to be maintained. Mixteca Kiwatl is the goddess and queen of Mictlan, Aztec mythology's underworld. Her role adds to that of her husband, Mictlan Tecutli, the lord of the realm of the dead. They rule the underworld together, overseeing the incoming souls to their domain, not a tormenting site, but a final resting place for souls. Their job is to make sure that the dead are properly cared for and that they have everything they need on the way to the afterlife. The goddess was portrayed as a skeletal figure with a skull crown and a bone skirt. He held a scepter or mirror, reflecting the true nature of a person's soul. The cult of Mixteca Kiwatl comprised rituals and offerings to honor the dead. Her celebrations served to recognize death as an essential part of life. While there are not as many details about the specific rituals dedicated to her as there are for other Aztec deities, her presence in the Aztec pantheon was crucial to understanding the afterlife. As Queen of Mictlan, Mixteca Kiwatl not only represents death, but also memory and care for the departed. Mixteca Kiwatl was often connected to the modern Mexican Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. This celebration combining indigenous and Catholic traditions honors and remembers the dead. As protector of the dead, Mixteca Kiwatl is seen as a bridge between ancient traditions and contemporary practices of ancestor veneration. One of the oldest and most meaningful gods in Mesoamerican mythology, Taloc, was worshipped by several cultures besides the Aztecs, such as the Toltecs and Teotihuacan. In Aztec religion, Taloc is the god of rain, water, fertility, and lightning and storms. A powerful deity, he is vital for agriculture and the growth of crops, as well as life in general. Taloc is often portrayed with blue skin, ring-shaped eyes, and huge fangs in his smile, representing his power and his connection to water and rain. He is known for having a lightning staff with him, used to spark storms, thunder, and rain. He is often partnered with a group of lesser deities known as Taloques, serving as his helpers and tasked with spreading the rain. He is also linked to Jalchi Utlike, the goddess of running water and springs, considered to be his wife or sister in different myth versions. Taloc's cult was hugely relevant to the Aztecs, who depended on the rain to grow their crops. He was paid tribute to in annual and lavish festivals, where offerings and sacrifices were made in an effort to secure plentiful rainfall and to protect the communities from droughts or floods. Sacrifices to Taloc were performed with the hope of obtaining sufficient rainfall for the crops. Unfortunately, these sacrifices sometimes included children, as it was believed that their tears were a harbinger of rain. Such rituals were conducted with the belief that human suffering could sway the gods to be merciful and provide rain. Thalok's great flood is one of the most tragic myths associated with him. Distraught with humanity, Thalok sent heavy rains that flooded the world, destroying civilization and turning human beings into fish. This myth represents the destruction and cyclical renewal of the world, a common theme in Aztec mythology. Taloc is an important figure to understand the relationship between the Aztecs and their natural surroundings. 
he evokes the power of nature and the belief that the gods exert a direct influence on the elements vital to human survival. Devotion to Tlaloc expresses the Aztec's awe and reverence for nature's power and unpredictability. Coatlique, known as Snake's Her Skirt by the Aztecs, is one of the most powerful and important goddesses in Aztec mythology. She is the goddess of the earth, fertility, life, and death, representing nature's duality, capable of generating and destroying. She was often portrayed wearing a snake skirt and a necklace made of human hands and hearts. This terrifying collar represented the earth, which devours everything it produces. She is also portrayed with sagging breasts as a symbol of nourishment and breastfeeding. Her face is frequently shaped like two face-to-face -face serpents, symbolizing the earth and the sky. Coatlique's cult was part of Aztec religion, and she was venerated as the mother of gods and human beings. As goddess of the earth, she was both the source of life and the host of the dead. Coatlique was feared and respected, epitomizing the unstoppable and often brutal power of nature. The goddess symbolized the Earth's ability to generate and destroy life. She stood for nature in its rawest form and the reality of life and death as mutually exclusive elements. Her figure reveals the Aztecs' profound relationship with the Earth and nature, and their respect and awe for life and death. Coatlique's figure is one of the most iconic in Aztec art, mirroring the complexity of their mythology and the significance of the goddess in society. She continues to be a powerful figure in Mexican culture, standing for strength, motherhood, and the power of nature.